Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Charlie. I am a master's student from Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, I'm advised by Professor Tian Qi Chen, uh, part of the Catalyst Research Group, and I'm also a member of the MLC community. And I'm very happy to be here today to present a project that we've worked on for the past one and a half year. Uh, the name of the project is WebLM. It is a high performance in browser LLM inference engine. So it's a mouthful of title, but uh, hopefully by the end of the talk, uh, it becomes clear what it entails. So a bit on the background, uh, we've seen great advancement in the past few years in uh, generative AI, uh, specifically in large language models. However, most of the time, the large language models are uh, hosted on servers. Uh, users send requests to the servers and get response back. And one of the main reasons is that those most performant models are, uh, are, 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 are super large, like 70 billions or 100 billions or even 400 billions. And to run these models, you need cloud server level GPUs such as H100 from, from NVIDIA or the AMD equivalent. However, more recently, we start to see trends where language models get small, smaller. For instance, uh, model providers start open sourcing smaller models, uh, such as Gemma 2 from Google, Llama 3.2 from Meta, Fi 3.5 from Microsoft, and Q1 2.5 from Alibaba, around the size of one to three billion parameters, thanks to the techniques such as quantization and distillation. Um, besides getting smaller, we also see the models getting more specialized. For instance, uh, there's a Japanese version of Gemma 2 fine-tuned on Japanese text, and Q1 2.5 also have math and coder models specifically. And on the other hand, for the consumer device, we see that they are getting much more performance. For instance, uh, for a 3 billion parameter models, 4-bit quantized, uh, we can see 30 to 70 tokens per second generation on a laptop, and uh, 10 to 20 tokens per second on mo mobile phones. So this is uh, very usable performance. And given these two trends, uh, it makes one wonder if it's possible to deploy the models locally. That is, for many tasks, maybe we don't need to run a super large model in the cloud. So a local deployment, as the name suggests, everything is run on your device. And this, there are several potential benefits. Here uh, we talk about two uh, quickly. Uh, the first one is privacy and personalization. Uh, like the name suggests, uh, everything is in your device, the, both the prompts and the generated output. Uh, so uh, the data can be kept locally for privacy. And therefore, it, it can also uh, enable uh, customized LLM with the local data that's in, on the device. And another potential benefit is uh, new paradigms from the system perspective, uh, where we can imagine a future where uh, cloud-based inference and uh, local deployment coexist. Uh, one simple scheme could be we route simpler requests to the local and only fall back to the uh, cloud uh, version uh, for the uh, harder tasks. And another possible paradigm is a decentralization for techniques such as federal learning, et cetera. So browser is an interesting uh, platform for such local LLM deployment uh, for several reasons. First of all, uh, browser forms a natural agentic environment for daily tasks. Uh, we do a lot of tasks uh, daily with browser, for instance, drafting emails, uh, booking calendars, or uh, making decks writing Google Docs, and we can imagine in the future maybe uh, there can be an agent in the form of a Chrome extension that automates these tasks for you. And besides being an agentic environment, uh, browser is also universally accessible, and it naturally abstracts out various devices, and this is beneficial for both users and developers. Uh, for users, they can engage with web application uh, without any setup, unlike some other solutions, maybe the user needs to in, uh, install a platform-specific package and figuring out the right dependencies, et cetera, but with web-based deployment, uh, opening up a URL, and that's it. And for developers, they only need to develop for a single platform. For instance, for large language models, we need to write GPU kernels because we want to use GPU to have uh, fast inference speed. And for non-browser-based solution, you need to write CUDA kernel for NVIDIA, uh, Rockham kernel for AMD laptop, and Metal kernels for Apple laptops. And that's a lot of work. You don't want to implement things like flash attention so many times. And, but with a browser-based solution, uh, a single web GPU kernel is going to work for all the laptops. And on the right-hand side, uh, this is a chatbot web application built with WebLM to kind of demonstrate the uh, convenience it can bring. 
Uh, in this case, user only needs to go to the URL and then select the model they want to chat with and they can start chatting. So the point is that uh, the browser-based deployment not only makes sense theoretically, it also starts gaining popularity and demonstrating that it is a viable uh, approach. Uh, one perspective to look at it is that uh, WebLM as a, a package has seen uh, growing trends uh, from the NPM download package trend and also the star history. It's, uh, it's just another perspective to show that this solution is getting uh, uh, adopted and getting popular. So now uh, we just kind of saw the uh, end result of how web-based, uh, browser-based local deployment, uh, the convenience it can bring. And I kind of want to take a step back to, uh, to go over the goal when building WebLM and therefore the challenges when building WebLM uh, so that we can understand the project a bit more in detail. So the goal of WebLM is to build a framework that deploys large language models locally in browser and therefore empower web app developers to use AI in their web application. So WebLM is, the user of WebLM are web app developers who have their own users. Uh, and another goal, long-term goal, is to become the backbone of future in-browser agents deployment. And given these goals, there, there are three challenges and therefore the three design principles when uh, building WebLM. The first challenge is that we want to find the right interface so that the uh, uh, web app developers can use WebLM in their, uh, in, their, in their web app. And we decided that we want to create an engine that behaves like an endpoint and follow OpenAI's API. Uh, therefore, WebLM is an LLM inference engine. And second, we need to ensure GPU acceleration uh, LLM is a non-trivial workload and we need careful uh, design and uh, technologies to enable the efficiency. And in this case, we leverage the MLC LLM project and the TVM project to compile performant web GPU kernels. And the third challenge and therefore design principle is we want to adapt to the browser's runtime environment. Uh, that is, we're not implementing a Python pa package, we're implementing purely in JavaScript and we're running entirely in browser, so there must be some caveats in there. And in this case, there are two main parts. The first part is that uh, WebLM supports built-in web worker, uh, has built-in web worker support to separate back-end and front-end uh, UI flow. And we also leverage WebAssembly to support any non-kernel of runtime support. So these are the three design principles and therefore it forms the title, a high performance in-browser LLM inference engine. So, uh, this is the overall architecture, and there are roughly three parts and correspond to the three design principles we uh, just saw. Uh, we can start from the left side. Uh, so this is the code that a uh, web app developer writes with WebLM. And this code resides in their web application front end, and the web app developer only interacts with a single construct called the service worker MLC engine. Uh, they instantiate this uh, construct and then they can load a model when they want and uh, send OpenAI requests to it and get OpenAI re uh, response back. Uh, so it's JSON in and JSON out. And they can use the stream back result to uh, populate their uh, web app, UI, et cetera. And as we can see, uh, the, um, the API of WebLM is almost identical to OpenAI, despite the fact that OpenAI is literally an API that runs everything in the cloud. And there are several reasons for such design. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to make it behave like an endpoint such that uh, the behavior is easier to be well-defined. It's JSON in, JSON out, you get what you expect. And another is that it's easy to integrate into existing projects because OpenAI API is very well adopted, uh, not only for OpenAI, but also for many other LLM uh, inference engines. And also it's easy to extend to more advanced features that are not just uh, L, uh, language generation. And I'll go through some examples of such features. Uh, one feature that WebLM support is structured output. So chatbots are great and cool, but we could also make LLM a standardized tool. Uh, and in order to do that, we want to uh, enforce the output of LLM. In this case, perhaps we want to in uh, force the model to generate a JSON, uh, not only to prompt it to generate JSON, but actually enforce it and make sure that it's a valid JSON. And not only it's a JSON, it, you also want to ensure that what fields uh, you want the JSON to have. 
And in this case, uh, on the top right corner, uh, you can see that you can do this with WebLM with a single line of code, uh, where you specify the response format to be a JSON object with your, uh, with your uh, customized JSON schema or grammar. And this is enabled by another project from Carnegie Mellon called X Grammar. It is an optimized grammar engine built by uh, Yi Xingdong from uh, Carnegie Mellon. And you can try it out in MLC AI's uh, Hugging Face uh, webpage with WebLM. Uh, give the model your JSON schema and then your prompt, and then it will generate a valid result. And this project is still not released yet, but we'll uh, open source it and publish a paper uh, later this month. And another feature is embedding. Uh, as you can see, despite having two models, one embedding model and a large language model, uh, you still only interact with the single engine construct. And you can either feed it an embedding request, or you can feed it uh, a chat completion request. And you can also integrate it with Lenchain.js for uh, reg-like uh, applications. And another feature is vision language model. Uh, we recently supported 5.3.5 uh, vision language model. And in this case, it's also another one-line change to the API where you feed the image URL to the model. And yeah. So that's basically the front end of WebLM. And now I want to talk about the uh, compile time, basically how we leverage WebGPU and how we ensure we uh, have performant GPU kernels. So on the right-hand side, we see that uh, we compile two artifacts ahead of time, and they are hosted online and downloaded when the user loads a model and cache in the browser so that it only downloads once. Uh, so given a Hugging Face open source model, we feed it to MLCLM, which is another project, and uh, it produces two things. One is the uh, converted or quantized weight, and there's nothing too special about it. But another thing is called a WASM library, which contains WebGPU kernels. So WebGPU, uh, WebGPU from our perspective, is an abstraction of different backend. Like I said, uh, there are different laptops having different GPUs, but we don't want to, uh, we want to have the same kernel that will be run on the different devices. And in this case, we need WebGPU kernel. And a quick uh, overview of how MLC LLM work. Uh, basically, you feed it with a model definition, and then it will uh, do various machine learning compiler optimizations, such as operator fusion, uh, memory planning, or uh, graph level optimization, et cetera. And then the output is going to be different kinds of kernels. It can be CUDA kernel, Rockham kernel, Metal kernel, or even kernel for iOS or Android devices. And in our case, it's a WebGPU kernel. And therefore, we can understand MLCLM as a black box, where the input is the model defined in Python. Uh, in this case, it's a JAMA model uh, batch forward method on the left uh, on the left hand side, and on the right hand side is what MLCLM outputs. It's a, a web GPU kernel called uh, Web GPU Shading Language WGSL kernel. And uh, so. WebGPU provides a lot of convenience, but it may come at a cost because it's doing some abstraction. And therefore, in this case, we compare WebGPU performance with native metal, uh, native metal kernel on the same laptop. And the conclusion is that uh, from our results, WebGPU kernel can, uh, can, can maintain 85% of native performance, and we believe there's more potential to close the gap. So that is how uh, WebLM supports GPU acceleration with WebGPU. And the second, the third, the last uh, part is how WebLM adapts to browser's runtime. And there are mainly two things. Uh, the first thing being that uh, WebLM has built-in web worker support. Uh, on the left-hand side, the user writes the, interacts with the service worker MLC engine, but it doesn't do much. It only forwards the request to the MLC engine that resides in the worker thread so that all the heavy computation is done in the background so that the UI flow doesn't get affected. And the MLC engine in the worker thread launches the web GPU kernel and launches the web assembly code for any non-kernel uh, runtime things, and it message passed the response back to the front end engine. And a second thing that WebLM does is that it uses WebAssembly. And the motivation is that having WebGPU is great, but it's not enough because not everything runs on the GPU. You need CPU support, such as launching the kernel or uh, NDR rate manipulation or tensor manipulation. 
Um, that is to run a kernel, you need to feed it with uh, ND array instead of a JavaScript number array. And uh, in this case, we reuse the TVM runtime, uh, which is implemented in C++, compile it into WebAssembly, so that on the left-hand side, on the JavaScript side, we can uh, instantiate an ND array uh, purely in JavaScript that uh, under the hood runs the C++ code. And another example is how uh, we support structure generation. Uh, we don't want to implement the entire X grammar re repository in JavaScript again. So in this case, we use mscript to compile the C++ code into JavaScript and then uh, so that we can interact with X grammar's API uh, in JavaScript. So the benefit of using WebAssembly is twofold. One is that it maintains a near native performance, but also uh, help code reuse. And that is it for the architecture. And uh, for next steps, we're looking into uh, in-browser AI agents. And uh, therefore, we need to have a better function calling API for uh, WebLM. And we also want to combine structured output with function calling, such that the generated output is, uh, is, 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 is correct. Uh, and therefore, making LLM a standardized tool rather than just building chatbots. And we also are looking into more uh, vision language model support. And another thing is uh, we want to make the web GPU kernel generate more performance. For instance, there's a recent subgroup operations that's uh, supported by web GPU. And here are some links for, uh, for to, to, to get started. Uh, you can try out the demo and uh, try WebLM in a sandbox environment and then uh, refer to the examples we have and give us feedback on GitHub. And that's the end of it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.